Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer with me. I'm the Reverend Lorna Bradley. Just a couple of announcements before I get started. Do remember that this Sunday coming, which is the 19th, we have services in Clancluc, Cansadowen, Han Stephen, St. Clair's, Clangan, and also Trelec and Abutis. So please, if you'd like to attend a, a live service, please get in contact with one of the wardens and they would love to book you in from there. We have our coffee afternoons on Wednesdays, still at 2 p.m. Um, Lawn is open to visitors at St. Martin's Church. It's well having well worth having a look at, so do please give it a go. They're open between 1.30 and 3.30. Uh, our Tuesday weekly message is back on, that's at 11 a.m. And we've been introducing um, the concept of creation care using some interviews with different people from around the diocese. So uh, do come along to that if you have a chance. And finally, Knit and Chat has resumed. So if you'd like to come along, please get in contact with either Sean or Aerith, uh, Esther, my mistake, Sean or Esther, um, and they'll book you in from them. Hope to see you at one of those events before too long from them. So we start our morning prayer and I'll be giving you the page numbers as we go through. Um, you can follow them along the Green Book. Now, if you haven't got a copy of the Green Book, you can download it from the Church and Wells website. Um, but we also send out each week um, the full service sheet, which I'll be following along through. So if you'd like to have one of those, you can print it off or follow it on your screen. Uh, and then you can say the words along with me, which would be absolutely lovely. So let's collect ourselves for a moment and prepare ourselves for our morning prayer. O oh Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Early in the morning, my prayer comes before you. Lord, have mercy. You speak in my heart and say, seek my face. Your face, Lord, will I seek. Christ, have mercy. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Our glorious trigger heart. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 37, and you can find it in your green books on pages 378-379. Be lovely if you joined in with me. Fret not because of evildoers. Be not jealous of those who do wrong. For they shall soon wither like grass, and like the green herb fade away. Trust in the Lord and be doing good. Dwell in the land and be nourished with truth. Let your delight be in the Lord, and he will give you your heart's desire. Commit your way to the Lord and put your trust in him, and he will bring it to pass. He will make your righteousness as clear as the light, and your just dealing as the noonday. Be still before the Lord and wait for him. Do not fret over those that prosper as they follow their evil schemes. Refrain from anger and abandon wrath. Do not fret, lest you be moved to do evil. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait upon the Lord shall possess the land. Yet a little while, and the wicked shall be no more. You will search for their place, and find them gone. But the lowly shall possess the land, and shall delight in an abundance of peace. The wicked plot against the righteous, and gnash at them with their teeth. The Lord shall laugh at the wicked, for he sees that their day is coming. The wicked draw their sword and bend their bow to strike down the poor and needy, to slaughter those who walk in truth. Their sword shall go through their own heart and their bowels shall be broken. The little that the righteous have is better than great riches of the wicked, for the arms of the wicked shall be broken. But the Lord upholds the righteous. The Lord knows the days of the godly, and their inheritance shall stand for ever. They shall not be put to shame in the perilous time, and in days of famine they shall have enough. But the wicked shall perish, like the glory of the meadows, 
The enemies of the Lord shall vanish. They shall vanish like smoke. The wicked borrow and do not repay, but the righteous are generous in giving. For those who are blessed by God shall possess the land, but those who are cursed by him shall be rooted out. When your steps are guided by the Lord and you delight in his way, though you stumble, you shall not fall headlong, for the Lord holds you fast by the hand. I have been young and now old, Yet never have I seen the righteous forsaken, or their children begging their bread. All the day long they are generous in lending, and their children also shall be blessed. Depart from evil and do good, and you shall abide for ever. For the Lord loves the thing that is right, and will not forsake his faithful ones. The unjust shall be destroyed for ever and the offspring of the wicked shall be rooted out. The righteous shall possess the land and dwell in it forever. The mouth of the righteous utters wisdom, and their tongue speaks the thing that is right. The law of their God is in their heart, and their footstep shall not slide. The wicked spy on the righteous and seek occasion to slay them. The Lord will not leave them in their hand, nor let them be condemned when they are judged. Wait upon the Lord and keep his way. He will raise you up to possess the land. And when the wicked are uprooted, you shall see it. I myself have seen the wicked in great power and flourishing like a tree in full leaf. I went by and lo, they were gone. I sought them, but they could nowhere be found. Keep innocence and heed the thing that is right, for that will bring you peace at the last. But the sinners shall perish together, and the posterity of the wicked shall be rooted out. The salvation of the righteous comes from the Lord. He is their stronghold in the time of trouble. The Lord shall stand by them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and shall save them, because they have put their trust in him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our first reading today is from 1 Chronicles 29, verses 10 to 20. Then David blessed the Lord, in the presence of all the assembly. David said, Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our ancestor Israel, for ever and ever. Yours, O Lord, are the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. For all that is in the heavens and on the earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. Riches and honour come from you, and you rule over all. In your hand are power and might. It is in your hand to make great and give strength to all. And now, our God, we give thanks to you and praise your glorious name. For who am I and what is my people, that we should be able to make this free will offering? For all things come from you. And of your own have we given you. For we are aliens and transients before you. As were all our ancestors. Our days on the earth are like a shadow. And there is no hope. O Lord our God. All this abundance that we have provided for building you a house for your holy name. Comes from your hand. And is all your own. I know my God that you search the heart and take pleasure in uprightness. In the uprightness of my heart, I have freely offered all these things. And now I have seen your people who are present here, offering freely and joyously to you. O Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Israel, our ancestors, keep forever such purposes and thoughts in the hearts of your people and direct their hearts towards you. Grant to my son Solomon that with a single mind, He may keep your commandments, your decrees and your statutes, 
performing all of them, and that he may build the temple for which I have made provision. Then David said to the whole assembly, Bless the Lord your God. And all the assembly blessed the Lord, the God of their ancestors, and bowed their heads and prostrated themselves before the Lord and the King. Our Gospel Canticle is available in the Green Book on pages 28 and 29. So again, if you'd like to join me to say it together. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, for he has come to his people and set them free. The Lord has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us, to show mercy to our forebears and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous before him all the days of our life. A new child shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins in the tender compassion of our God. The dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our Gospel reading this morning is from Mark, chapter 12, verses 1 to 12. Then he began to speak to them in parables. A man planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a pit for the winepress and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the season came, he sent a slave to the tenants to collect them, to collect from them his share of the produce of the vineyard. But they seized him and beat him and sent him away empty handed. And again he sent another slave to them. This one they beat over the head and insulted. Then he sent another and that one they killed. And so it was with many others. Some they beat, others they killed. He had still one another, a beloved son. Finally, he sent him to them, saying, They will respect my son. But those tenants said to one another, This is the heir come, let us kill him, and the inheritance will be ours. So they seized him, killed him, and threw him out of the vineyard. What then will the owner of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the tenants and give the vineyard to others. Have you not read the scripture? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. When they realized that he had told his parable against them, they wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowd. So they left him and went away. The talk this morning uh, is because this morning we remember Bishop, Bishop Ninanian, who was the first Bishop of Galway, and he established a monastery in a place called Whitholm. He was born around 360 AD and died around 430 AD. And following loose anthropology, it suggests that he was the son of a British chieftain and that he traveled to Rome on pilgrimage. So to me, that means somebody had already pilgrimaged to him to teach him. But there in Rome, he was ordained and he was consecrated there as well. On his return, he took upon himself the task of converting the pagans. In particular, he wanted to convert the Picts to Christianity. He saw his mission to Scotland as fundamental 
And where he was less successful converting the Picts, he was very successful converting the Celts. And that is for what he's renowned. There remains a large number of churches dedicated to him throughout Scotland. And he was influential later with the renowned work of St. Columba and St. Kentigan. Bishop Ninian was buried at Whitholm and his shrine there was popular with pilgrims, including James IV of Scotland. Bishop Ninian was believed a saint after the writings of Aylred, who reported that six miracles were performed during his mission work and then a further four at his shrine. As an important shrine in Scotland, Robert the Bruce, dying from leprosy at the time, visited the shrine hoping for a cure in the 12th century. And then, all into modern times, in 2010, Pope Benedict visited St Ninian's on the shrine on St Ninian's Day. Um, it generated such spirit in the area that they resurrected the festivities that would have once been accorded to a saint of such reputation. And that continues to today. Well, COVID reliant, of course. Now, I looked for some writings by the bishop, but I'm afraid I haven't found much. But I have found a hymn written for him by the Reverend J. McCarty, which I believe shows the high regard which he had um, and has continued to be held in. I shan't sing it to you, though, but I will read it out. Ninian of Galway, homage we fondly pay and tribute bring. Saint of our church proclaimed. Scotland's apostle named. Thy praise we sing, thy praise we sing. Born of the Scottish race, God led thee forth by grace to find in Rome that pearl so richly priced, that faultless creed of Christ, and bear it home, and bear it home. Softly the Christian morn dawned, o oh, the lone withorn like a kindly son. Nobly thy loyal band, led by thy sure command, our kingdom won, our kingdom won. Where once thy footsteps trod, unquenched the fires of God, await thy hand. Renew thy fervent care, tender to God our prayer, to bless our land, to bless our land. Quite a lovely um, hymn be nice to be to hear it actually perform someday. Our service continues with Canticle 5 which you'll find on pages 144 and pages 145 of your green book, A Song of God's Splendour. Sing to the Lord a new song, sing to the Lord all the earth, sing to the Lord and bless his name. Tell out his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all peoples. Honour and majesty are before him. Power and splendour are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord honour and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the honour due in his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Tell it out among the nations that the Lord is king. With righteousness he will judge the world and the peoples with his truth. Filled with confidence, let us pray. Let us pray to the Father of the church and the world. O Lord God, and direct your church in the way of truth, unity, and praise. Fill us with the power of your Holy Spirit. We pray especially for Joanna, our Bishop, and our LMA Dean, Reverend Justin, Reverend Adam, Reverend Carol, Reverend Peter, and Martine, our Ordinand. And I ask that you pray for me. Lord, in your mercy hear our prayer. And we pray for all who minister in this LMA. We ask for blessings to be upon them. 
Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And we pray for the work and communities, the staff, volunteers and congregations of the churches of Dale, St. James the Great and in Milford Haven, St. Catherine and Peter. And we pray for the Diocese of Exeter in the Church of England, Canterbury. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Deepen our awareness of the unity of the home and family. Grant that we and all people may live together in justice, peace and mutual trust, no matter what their race or culture, background or circumstance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Cleanse the prejudice and selfishness from our hearts and inspire us to hunger and thirst for what is right. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Teach us to use your creation for your greater glory, that all may share the good things you provide. Forgive us for despoiling our world, for failing to appreciate it as we should. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lead us to love one another, and unite us in the service of your kingdom and each other. We pray for children and young people, and for all who are new in the faith. Direct and guide them in the way that leads to you, and help us to be welcoming to all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Strengthen all who give their energy and skill for the healing of those who are sick in body, mind or spirit. Support all who strive to bring relief from the coronavirus. And we pray especially for those who've asked for our prayers today. Our friends, Mildred, Muriel, Jean and Bert, Will, Esther, Carwin and Cecil, Peggy, Arwen and Annette. Elsie, Mike and Helen, Jeff and Anne, Adrian and Faye, Jill, John, Ian, Martha, Vi and Lynn, Mary, Joan, Ruth, Peter and family, Simon, Lynette. June, Eleanor, and Ella. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Grant a peaceful end and eternal joy to all who are dying, and your comfort to those who mourn. And we pray for the departed and their families in their loss. We pray for Agnes, for John, for Rosemary, and for the family of Lily. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The things, good Lord, that we pray for, give us the grace to labour for. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. We hold in our hearts all who need prayer today. And in a moment of silence, I ask you to raise their names to heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And would you join with me to say together the Lord's Prayer in the language of your choice. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And we continue in prayer with the collect of the day. God, who in generous mercy 
sent the Holy Spirit upon your church in the burning fire of your love. Grant that your people may be fervent in the relationship of the gospel, that always abiding in you, they may be found steadfast in faith and active in service. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we continue with the second collect for peace. O oh God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life. To serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your protection, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord and Heavenly Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, we thank you for bringing us safely to the beginning of this new day. Defend us by your mighty power, that we may be kept free from all sin and safe from every danger, and enable us in everything to do only what is right in your eyes. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me this morning. I hope you're able to follow through with the service. I'm using the page numbers or maybe the printout as well. And I look forward to seeing you uh, before too long. God bless.